Welcome back. I do apologise but I've really messed up badly this time. I've managed to delete tons and tons of video. Never mind, this video is about how to create a power supply connector for a steampunk machine. Now you could use some wires and things but that would be really wrong considering the whole idea behind steampunk is that electricity hasn't been invented it's all got to be done with steam, compressed air or some other natural force, such as clockwork perhaps. Having tried several different versions, ways of connecting the machines up, hiding them initially, hiding the connections, I thought, well hang on a minute. If it were designed by the Victorians, they would be very proud of the fact that it was run from steam or compressed air. So make it very obvious. Hence the fact, this lovely antique shower hose. And this is fantastic, because it's 1.5 metres long, looks great, and also the fittings that come with it actually do fit into standard brass compression fittings, which is fantastic. So what I have done, having lost all the video, I've got some of this lovely fabric-covered co um, cable, which looks glossy and shiny and looks just like copper braid. Um, I've got a piece of that coming through a 15 to 8 millimeter reducer, compression reducer. That then comes off and attaches to a USB plug. That then fits into the appropriate adapter, whichever country you're in which provides 5 volts, spot on 5 volts regulated, which is great that all the machines run off. And then at the other end, well this one actually had a, a plug connection, but the one I'm going to make for the, or the two I'm going to make for the climatic revelators are going to be clamped right in place and be connected directly. If anyone's interested, I will happily refilm or make another couple to show you how to achieve this. Because you have to take the rubber pipe out and have to fiddle and fart about with it. But it looks lovely. I mean, it's just great. So you mount your beautiful steampunk machine on the wall. And then you see this lovely big pipe coming down, disappearing. And then at floor level, you have some nice braided copper looking cable. And I'm going to the power supply that you plug in, that runs everything. Right, on with the show! So the first thing is to trim off 37mm of the outer copper colour stuff. I already bared this for something else, but I've measured 37mm. And now I'm just... Move that out the way... You can see to just cut that off. Into the 25 millimeters and a 37 millimeter length of 12.5 millimeter heat shrink flat. In fact, it says loose. Lovely. So I've got then loose. As always, sticking things down or holding things in place with blue tack. So I'm not interested in the middle two because the middle two in USB are data. Brown that I'm going to represent plus five volts soldered into the hopefully the right places. There we are. Pulled it along so that all fits perfectly. Now I'm going to glue the top and bottom parts together with super glue. <laughs> So that's now gripped that and the last thing to do is to get the cable fixed properly to stop any sort of pulling of the wire. So putting the glue on first means it is really going to stick solidly and provide all the physical support that we need. I'm going to slide this second one over. One final test 
just to a very very important test once you've got everything connected up there's the ends of the wire that goes through the um, pipe I've got my multimeter connected because I really don't want to solder this together and find I've made a mistake and then it starts working so we'll plug the USB adapter in and it says yep 4.95 volts you can't get much better than that and that's the right polarity so I'll go ahead and connect it up so we now know the brown one is positive and the blue one is 0 volts as expected what I've decided to do is to drill a hole through up here because this is all glued on a very strong and put a cable tie around it so it's just going to grip the corner then whatever you move here it's enough free movement there but it's not going to move the connecting wires or the solder joints lovely I'll make a note of that just received a nice delivery of brass fasteners some more of those and topping up these boxes All right, I think I've bought that was 400 separate items at £40 they're so expensive brass things and that's from a reasonably priced shop it's amazing but you know if you want the best you have to pay for it yeah well stocked up at last it's a very dark day today it's about lunchtime I'll switch the lights on but the two climatic revelators here we are are being tested it's about three or four days and they're working perfectly still guarded over by the hamster fabulous once they've been running for a week and I'm completely convinced that they work perfectly then I would urge you to visit my Etsy shop or website and consider purchasing one of them if you remember rightly these ones are number 8 and number 9 now just a recap about the climatic revelators, what they actually do they display the weather forecast, weather scene a special carousel they record the last 24 hours of barometric pressure readings which they can display, if I put that to the current reading is that which I can't see because I'm looking through the viewfinder is about uh, 1010 hectopascals the pressure tendency is falling so the weather is going to get worse which I can vouch for and you can also set it down to replay the last 24 hours of readings so that will replay them you can see it starts off pretty high and then just falls lower and lower overnight and once it's finished playing the last 24 hours of readings back it will then play a tune on the chimes to indicate whether the pressure is increasing or decreasing and the pitch is falling so it's decreasing while it does that it cycles through all the weather scenes currently which I would agree with yeah and there's the sensor here the PIR sensor so that it's lovely coming down in the morning as I walk past they both come to life and fade up and play tunes which is great in stereo for once brilliant <laughs>